what's going on guys uh, we're gonna do a short quick video because i'm trying to beat the rain today but i did want to make a video of this since i'm doing the brakes and i don't like doing brakes very often so hopefully i won't have to do them again for a while uh 96 fleetwood also works down to 93 the only difference on 93 is it doesn't have independent uh rear brakes uh, i think it has abs on the rear but i'm not positive on the 93s but 94 through 96 i know they're exact same got a problem i drove it to work the other day I had a really soft pedal uh went to leave work the other morning the brake pedal pretty much went to the floor i still had a little bit of brakes but you know huge difference so i crawled under the car seen a little bit of moisture hanging out on the backing plate of this wheel so i'm pretty sure the wheel cylinder is bad um pull the drum here in a second and see if i'm right or not uh, i started on this side because i seen the fluid worst case scenario if i do get rained out i'm gonna just fix this side I'm, i've got the parts to fix both sides i plan on doing both sides but the weather right now is really I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, I get a cold breeze coming through here, so I'm expecting it to rain pretty soon because it's hot right now. So I'm going to pull this, uh, let you guys check it out, and start tearing it down and fixing it. When buying brake shoes for a Fleetwood, there are two different options. I don't remember the size off the top of my head. I want to say it's like two and a eighth and two and a quarter, something around there, or maybe two inches or two and a quarter. Don't quote me on that, but there are two different sizes. And I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe, just going off the top of my head, uh, I believe the bigger size is for like a towing package or a limo. One of those, or either both of those. Uh, every Fleetwood I've owned, they've had the smaller brakes on them. And none of them have had towing packages. I've had five of them. And all of them have had the smaller brakes, or as far as the shoes. Keep that in mind when you go to buyer pads. Um, usually it is the smaller ones, you know. When in doubt, I do try and buy both of them. But a lot of times they don't have both uh, sets of brake shoes in stock. And I've usually went with a smaller one, and that's what it's been every single time. So unless yours has a uh, towing package, chances are it'll be the smaller shoes. All right, if my notions are correct, we'll pull this off and it will be wet inside. And it looks like I am correct. See all that brake fluid in there? You don't want that. And when you have this happened, you really need to change your pads out because those soak up the fluid and it just kind of dissolves the brake pads. So if you only change your wheel cylinders, leave those pads, it ain't going to be long. You're going to have to be right back in here changing the pads. So you might as well do it once. All right, before getting started, it is a very good idea to take a picture of how all these springs go because it can get really confusing. Um, you know, some springs look close to being the same, but they are not. And usually what I recommend is doing one side at a time. Uh, normally when I take the stuff apart, I kind of set it on the ground and I map it out just how this is. Worst case scenario, somebody comes by, kicks your springs all over, you're lost. You can look at the other side, you know, because it'll still all be together. Handy little tool right here. Gets the springs off pretty quick. Uh, you can use, I've always used vice grips, put them on there and pull the springs. But uh, I managed to shop years ago and see a technician with this. And I was like, oh man, it's a game changer. I don't know why I never did that before. But we're going to start tearing this thing apart. And it can still even be a pain. And usually when you get it apart, parts go flying everywhere. So safety glasses aren't a bad idea. I did get this uh, from, I think it was a Mac. Yeah, Mac Tools. There's the part number two. It comes in really handy for taking these bad boys off. Uh, once again, you can use vice grips. I've used them many, many years and they've never failed me. But these make it so much easier. Kind of fold this around, twist your brake, your emergency brake lever. It usually pops out fairly easy. It's been a while since I've done drum brakes, thank God. So where does it go? It goes that way. Kind of just pull up and twist, and it'll come right out. You can see all that brake fluid in there. We'll just let that guy hang. This is our uh, brake adjuster. And pull the spring out of that. Hold it this way so you can see it. It all just pops apart. Yeah. 
and it is best if you're doing this in grass. Uh, put you like a pan or a board or something under it so everything doesn't fall in the grass and get lost forever. But we've got it stripped down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull my wheel cylinder, put a new wheel cylinder on there, and then I'm going to spray it all down and clean it up. Yeah, this is the back side of the back and plate. That right there is 11 millimeter. That's your brake line. Uh, it's best to use a line wrench. Now, although most times I have had to use a vice grip because the line wrench will still strip them out, even if you got a good one. But it's always best to try that first. Those right there hold your wheel cylinders on. Uh, they are half inch. All right, we got our wheel cylinder off. Uh, word of advice, take your hose off before loosening the bolts for the wheel cylinder because it'll hold your wheel cylinder secure, obviously. Uh, now we got that off, spray it down with some brake cleaner. While you're in here, go ahead and spray that and clean it. That is your uh, ABS sensor. I've been having a traction control light come on. I'm hoping that was it because it had a lot of buildup on it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean it while I'm here. Well, I already have went ahead and cleaned it. So make sure you get that too while you're in there. The quality of stuff is just getting terrible. Is I really supposed to keep junk out with a hole in it? All right, installation, uh, I would say is opposite of removal, but it's kind of not. You really want to hook your brake line up first because otherwise you're going to be fighting your brake line trying to get it lined up just right because it does need to be just right in order for it to thread in. So usually I do that first while I still have some movement. Plus it'll stop your brake fluid from leaking all over sooner. And don't forget to tighten your brake line because otherwise you're just going to have a bunch of problems. Alright, this is where stuff starts getting a little crazy. Uh, like I said earlier, take a picture beforehand because once you got all the stuff here laid out and it's all been kicked around, it does get a little bit more confusing. Uh, be careful with these too because everything comes apart, literally. And once it does, sometimes it gets confusing. Hopefully, you can look back on this video and see the way it's supposed to go. We got a new one of these in our kit right there. Check it out, looks the same, looks good. We'll pop it in place. And something I learned today. I never really paid attention to it before, but these springs are different. Uh, and the reason being is because this one has more junk on the side. I guess is the easiest way to say it. It's got more pads. It's got your uh, e-brake lever and your brake pad. So it's going to be a shorter spring because it's got more stuff in there. Never really noticed that before. Got our wheel cylinder in there. Cleaned up our little push bars, I guess is what you call them. I'm not really sure on that. Um, got them all clean. Got them stuck in there. Now the fun kind of begins and with brakes, with drum brakes, you kind of got to like put it all in at once and hold it while you're trying to clip all the springs together. And it is a bit of a nightmare. So it's just something you really got to take your time with. And here's a very important thing to pay attention to. You see those are different. The big ones always go on back. Remember, Bob, big on back. That's the easiest way to remember it. Big shoes back here, little shoes up here. The shoes themselves are the same size, actually, but the lining is different sizes. So pay attention to that. I had to learn the hard way. Might as well turn this on so you can watch me struggle. All right, we got our new uh, pins in there. We got our back brake pad on. Our e-brake lever is bar is back there. Uh, we got our, I don't know, our, uh, our self-adjuster lever. That's what that is. Got it on there. Like I said, be careful because that does come apart very easily. We're going to go ahead and throw our spring and our new retainer on there. And it'll kind of hold all that into place while we fight the other side. And this is where the beauty of this tool really, really comes in as we drop everything. These can be a bit of a pain. As it is right now. You just push it through, turn it 90 degrees, and that locks. And you pick up all your remainder parts. Put them all back together by reviewing this video and figuring out how it all actually went. And then we got our little spring there that we need to put in there. They did not send a new one. That actually comes in the adjuster kit. So if you want a new star adjuster, you gotta buy it separately. Kind of forgot about that to be honest. I thought it came all as one, but it doesn't, so we're going to reuse it. That is in there. We got our crossbar. 
spreader bar, whatever it's called. Slide it in there. So we got that on there. I'm going to start working on putting this other side on. We still got our springs and our adjuster down here. Normally I like to hook one side of my spring and then kind of put my front pad up there. It tends to work out pretty good. I'm not saying it always does. And this is one thing you do want to clean because it threads in and out. A lot of times I get brake dust build up on it. It doesn't hurt to put some anti-seize on it. This one moves pretty good. I think I'm going to skip the anti-seize this time. Uh, it also has a direction that goes in. It goes that way. Because if you put it that way, your spring will get in the way. Plus the adjuster arm won't hit it at all. So it sits in there just like that. But we're going to wait. We're going to put our spring in there first. And then kind of cram it all in there. All at one time maybe. And this is where you resort back to your pictures and see which way it goes. Because honestly I don't remember. I think it goes that way. But probably totally 100% wrong. So I'm going to look back in my picture and check it out. All right, and as for the spring that holds the two bottom shoes together, that's how it goes. If it goes that way, it'll be in the way of your adjuster. And if you don't put the long side on the back end, it gets in the way of your adjuster because your spring will be on your adjuster. So usually what I like to do, try and use leverage to my advantage. I'll hook it on there. I put my star wheel in there, or my adjuster wheel, whatever it's called. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see this. But I'll hook my uh, spring up, and then I'll push my shoe back like that. And kind of get the adjuster wheel on there. Yeah, you guys can see that. Get my adjuster wheel on there, and just use it just like leverage. It makes it a lot easier. Line up a crossbar and everything else under the sun as everything tries to move and wiggle. All right, so now we're gonna throw our other retainer in there. All right, now hopefully everything shouldn't all fly off, even though it still can. So be prepared for that. And you wanna make sure that everything is still lined up because it will definitely move all the time. All right. And another thing to pay attention to is what spring overlaps what spring. Hence why a picture comes in really handy here. Don't just take one picture. You know, take multiples. Take a shot from the front and take a shot down on the sides, up. It will come in handy and you'll thank yourself later. Trust me. Ask me how I know. All right. I had to ditch the gloves. I myself had to go back to the previous video because I could not remember how everything went. But this goes on first. It hooks to your e-brake lever. And you can use this to push it down and it will hook up there and make you want to make sure you got a little washer on there because it can fall off as well and it seems to be in there properly so we got that on and this spring here it'll be orange if you got the same fit i think they're all color coded the same way that will clip over that and we'll try our little tool out here Kind of made to do this. I said I've never really used this one before. I always use a screwdriver. I think it'll actually probably work out good because it has a little notch to kind of prevent that from sliding off. So we will see how it works. If it works out well or not. That doesn't seem right. This has to be. It has to go in just like that. So we will see how this goes. out pretty good no complaints and our white spring will go in here and it will clip over that just as well let's see if this will work on this also Heck yeah. that's what i'm talking about she used this thing a long time ago i've had it forever Get our little pins in position. Everything seems to be good. Our crossbar is in there. Our e brake is in there. Our e brake lever is in there. Or our adjuster lever, I guess it'd be called. Our star wheel's in there. Everything's tight. Our springs back there is in there. All of our retainers are on there. 
So we are looking good. Everything's closed up. And now we will uh, throw our drum on there. Uh, once again, another thing with the anti-seize wouldn't be a bad idea. You might be able to see there, and it's shiny. Your brakes rub there. So it probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of anti-seize on there. I'm probably not going to do it this time, even though I'll probably regret it. But you can do it. You probably should do it. I should probably do it. But we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to get my new drum. I'm going to clean my new drum because it does have a protective oil on it to keep it from rusting in the box. And that stuff also will soak into your brand new pads. So I'm going to clean it off some brake clean. And we'll throw it on here and start adjusting our brake drums out. All right, what you're wanting is you want to feel a little bit of friction on your uh, shoe with your brake drums or on your brake drum with your brake shoes. Right now we got none. So we're gonna pull that out and adjust this. You can move that little lever up and down or you can just pull it and turn the wheel, either or. It all does the same thing. Not even close. go this might be a little bit tight yeah I think I'm gonna back it up about a turn or two there we go I like that that feels pretty good so we're gonna leave this side I'm gonna jump and do the other side I'm gonna just do it alone uh, that way I can do it faster even though it's actually clear skies out but you guys don't need to see the other side it's the same uh, as this side just kind of a mirrored image um, so yeah, when I get that side done, I'll bring it back, we'll bleed the brakes, I'll show you a few different ways to bleed the brakes if you're by yourself, like I usually am. So let me get that done, and I'll bring you guys back. This is the passenger side. It is actually just a little bit different. Uh, you got your parking brake lever up there on the passenger side, the driver side it's on the back with this arm. So there is a difference. Uh, other than that, the springs look to be the same. So just do yourself a favor and take a picture of each side before you take them apart, and that'll help you out. All right, got the passenger side all done. We are ready to bleed. Normally, what I do on brakes, uh, some vehicles are, you know, built differently. Most of the time, it's the furthest wheel. You basically want to start at the furthest wheel, go to the second furthest, the third furthest, and the closest to the master cylinder. That's how I've always done it on big bodies. That's pretty much how I've done it on 90% of GM cars. I can't really think of one off the top of my head that's any different. So, there is... One of three ways, I guess, uh, that I can think of how to do it. Normal, traditional way of bleeding brakes. You know, have somebody else with you. Uh, you can have them pump it up three times, open your bleeder, fluid should come out. Uh, also, I've learned, I mean, I guess a little bit faster way maybe. Have them push the pedal down, open your bleeder, close it. Have them pull the pedal back up, push it back down, open it, close it. Uh, we used to do that in a repair shop, and it seemed to save a little bit of time, I guess. Uh, next way, I used to use this a lot, basically a one-man bleeder. Uh, they sell a kit or you can just make it and it's just some I don't know, some kind of rubber hose uh, with a bottle you want to make sure the hose goes down in the brake fluid and that's some pretty nasty brake fluid but usually put new brake fluid in there because it will suck that into the brake lines but what you want to do is you want to make sure to have it above the wheel cylinder usually I set it up on top of the axle like that run this to my brake bleeder hook it on there crack it open and just go inside and push the brake pedal Push the brake pedal, in and out, in and out. What it'll do, it'll push all them air bubbles out. It'll bubble in that fluid. And when you bring that pedal back up, it'll suck the fluid back up. So it's pushing the air out and sucking fluid back in. Works pretty good in scenarios like this, you know, where you already have the, the lines already primed, there's already fluid in the lines. 90% of the time, it's worked perfectly for me. Uh, this next method, I basically bought it because I'm doing more and more differential swaps you know pulling rear ends out to do work on hydraulics and stuff like that so i'm getting to where the vehicle sits for a long time with no fluid in the lines and i'm having to try and prime the lines back by myself i have had this work doing that but i've also had it not work more frequently so i broke down and bought the tool to actually use a vacuum to suck this out and i'm gonna try that out today because i'm by myself and i got a new tool so might as well play with it all right so i'm gonna try this thing out for the first time kind of it's actually a second because uh i used it to suck the fluid out of the master cylinder which is another pretty sweet thing about it uh, i got a little attachment right here 
There's like a little hose. Sucked all the bad fluid out of the master cylinder, so we're starting out all fresh. Uh, I'm gonna get all the bad stuff out of the uh, lines from the front to the back. Basically, I'm gonna run it till this tube is clear. So let's see how good this thing works. Got my bleeder open. Crack this open. Hopefully we'll see some fluid come through soon. All right, we got one side more or less bled out. Feeling pretty confident. Uh, you do still see air bubbles in the line, and I think that's probably the suction around the threads of the uh, bleeder screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and we'll see how it goes. So now you know how to do the rear brakes on a Fleetwood. Uh, I did turn the car around, bled the front brakes also. I still had just a little bit of a soft pedal. You may want to bleed all the brakes. Uh, it definitely did help. Plus I got all the old brake fluid out of there that had been contaminated over the years. So it's got all fresh fluid through all the lines and uh, it made a pretty big improvement. I'm pretty happy with it. So we're going to end the video here. Uh, hit the like button, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if this video helped you out. Hopefully it did. I uh, got more videos of Fleetwoods to come. Uh, I work on them as need be. You know, this one, I got my tan one also. And if I find another one roaming around, I'll pick it up if it's priced right. Uh, other than that, I think that's going to end it here. Clyde says hi. Other than that, I think we're going to end the video here. So we'll see you on the next one. What's the problem? <laughs>